When looking at Istanbul's cinematic offerings of the 70s and 80s, The Three Mighty Men, starring a Turkish Captain America, a Turkish Spider-Man fighting a Turkish equivalent of the Mexican <laughs> Lucha Libre sportsman El Santo, or Body, a latex and midget-laced nightmare interpretation of E.T., where the alien in question looks less like that lovable extraterrestrial that we all know so well, and more like the giant brown blob of pudding that Woody Allen has to fight in Sleeper. <laughs> It's easy to have high expectations for 1982's Danyani Kurataran Adam. Is that the Star- man who saved the world? And that's Star Wars? That's the name of the movie. Turkish Star Wars, that's the name of it? The Man Who Saved the World. That's awesome. Once the handwritten title cards had swept shakily (laughs) across the screen, and we opened to see the vastness of space, and an ominous karaoke-style reverb-laden voice tells us about the future war that will be fought there, I knew that my expectations were to be met. Okay, question. So they recreate the whole thing. They're not... uh, Like, they're actually recreating the movie... They're not dubbing over. Let me let me keep going. Okay, I just have questions. That's part of the deal. Yes, friends. I'm asking what everyone else is thinking. <laughs> yes, friends. We realize that in the future there will be a great war, uh, a nuclear war fought by a thousand year old wizard who wants the atom bomb. Keep it in space. A war in the stars. A Star Wars. Oh, maybe that's, that's why a good name for a movie. Every scene that we've been seeing so far looks strangely, uncannily exactly like every space scene from the original Star Wars. As if someone unscrupulously Middle Eastern studio just flat out stole the scenes and inserted them into their own movie. Thinking, what the hell, it's not like anyone's going to remember that silly Western movie Star Wars. It's been five years, you guys. (laughs) Five. So they made this in the 80s? They made this in 1983. No shit. It's been around that long? Then, oh my god, we meet our heroes. Murat and Ali. Of course. They are engaged in a riveting spacecraft dogfight, the likes of which we haven't seen since... Oh, what was it? It's on the tip of my tongue. These scenes are shot with each actor wearing white motorcycle helmets sitting in front of a screen of Star Wars playing behind them and acting as if they are pushing imaginary buttons and levers just off screen. The director isn't even interested in keeping any semblance of realism. Having splices and camera angles of the action behind the actor's cockpit change dramatically willy-nilly. As X-Fighters and TIE Fighters swarm and zoom behind them, our heroes dispense such action-packed dialogue as Murat, ascend above them, and I shall ascend too. And those guys we are fighting are too sour-faced. I wish some girls in miniskirts would show up instead. (laughs) So is there subtitles through this whole thing? Yes. Oh, great. Soon enough, our two heroes crash land on a planet that looks strangely like a mix between the deserts of Gorame, Turkey, and the pyramids in Egypt. Because they were. As the music of Indiana Jones and Flash Gordon swell to provide an air of adventure... There's Queen in this movie? I start wondering something. What is it with movies like this and their action heroes? Not to lump lump together different cultures, but I noticed this with Indian movies from the 70s and 80s, too. The girls were all young and fresh-faced, but the men were all Shatner-bodied, middle-aged schlubs with a serious Omar Sharif vibe going on. (laughs) Our two heroes here are no exception. Swaggering along in what looked like homemade fleece ABBA costumes, complete with gold foil cummerbunds, they look less like Luke and Han, and more like a bloated Steve Perry from Journey and a mentally retarded James Brolin. (laughs) Right before being attacked by foam skeletons on horseback, the heroes wonder aloud if maybe they landed on a planet of only women and how sweet that would be if it were true. Totally sweet. I can relate. It's a conversation I have millions of times with my best friend in junior high. From there, me on this podcast. Yes, and you on this podcast. Exactly. (laughs) From there, we delve deeper into a weird world of monsters, zombies, a gold brain that later gets melted down into a pair of snazzy boots, and the thousand-year-old wizard. Boots. He is frustrated. (laughs) He is frustrated because he cannot destroy Earth due to the fact that it was protected by, and I'm quoting verbatim here, a shield of concentrated human brain molecules. The really fascinating part is that it looked exactly like the Death Star. Weird, huh? The storylines may be completely different, with the man who saved the world going from more of a warlord trying to take over the planet and a couple of rough-and-tumble macho badasses being the ones who saved the day, rather than some of the more nuanced message about good and evil, courage and family that Star Wars embodied. Of course, that didn't stop these guys from stealing and staging a scene at the Moss Eisley Cantina anyway. Nice. Lastly... As far as romance, the best we get is some longing looks that our hero gives to a random village girl he meets. 
Istanbul, Istanbul may be modern enough in 83 to stage a swashbuckling space opera, but that doesn't mean that we're going to stoop to Hollywood gutter standards by having them, you know, hold hands or something like that. The action, however, is awesome. <laughs> There is some very something very special about small budget foreign action and horror films. The stunts and fight scenes look real because they are real. When someone gets dragged behind a horse, you can bet your ass that hurt. <laughs> Kick someone off a ledge, better learn how to tuck and roll. Every jab of a rubber spear and karate chop to the head makes an impact with such gusto. I never really got tired of it. Oh, uh, wow. With a cardboard kabuki stand-in for Darth Vader, stormtroopers that would look more at home in a 7th grader school play rendition of Beastmaster, and evil fortresses that seem to be made out of couch cushions, the Star Wars comparison really starts to fall apart. In fact, in both director Sentin Inak and male lead Kunyant Arink's case, the most authentically Star Wars thing about both of them is their names. Wow. <laughs> so did you like it? Uh, yeah, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> So I got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, That's my how, essay. Though. How long was it? Uh, it's about, I think it's a, it's a it's like an hour and 10 minutes or something like that, I think. I think it's like and, and 70 what, or 80 How minutes. many screens are we talking here in Turkey? Does this go up on? Um, it was a box office failure because even over there by 83... Like audiences were like, you guys just stole Star Wars. Like it's fuck, <laughs> it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Like I mean, that's why I put that in there. Like, oh, it's been five. Nobody will remember. Yeah, dude, it's Star. This came out a year after like Empire you're doing came Ruben out. And Ed or, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not even like. It, well, apparently, they tried to do a new version. Like in, uh, I think the late nineties or early two thousands, they tried to do like a sequel to it. And and everyone was just like, dude, your special effects look so awful because they didn't have movies to steal I love it from like they did. That it was made in the eighties. I love that they literally and that just you're sat, reviewing dude. Twenty two years yeah. or twenty one years later, they just sat a guy down in front of like your Tie Fighters, like this is, this is going by behind them, yeah. and they're like like acting like they're in this <laughs> cockpit but he didn't even care it's like one minute he's in space and then he's like flying and then out, out of nowhere like now he's flying towards a planet like you don't know you have no amazing. idea amazing it was it was i like i said my favorite part about it it reminded me of like the old australian grindhouse films mm -hmm. where it's just like oh that he totally pushed that guy off of that mountain you know what i mean where you're like that's not so would you say this is like a true punishment review oh like, yeah like yeah what what was the one I did? Sorority babes in the dance of death. Yeah, like that kind of bullshit. Yeah, it's like, like that level where you're just five like people have seen this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'm one of I'm one of a handful of but people. But they did try and put it in theaters and stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, that's it's not amazing. Yeah, they actually were trying to. People are like, yeah, I've seen Star it's Wars. Star Wars, you guys, we the know man who saved the world. The man who saved the world. <laughs> that's what it's. it's I mean. <laughs> I mean, we've both seen like Masters of the Universe, and that steals from Star Wars really bad. Like, right. You know, like. Right. But but it's like, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around what it even looks like. Uh, you know what? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you really quick just a scene from it. I like, <laughs> I like that you're like. I think I've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like thirty seconds uh, into it. But you can see now, like what I what I mean when I'm just like, you know. Uh, like it's i just i love i love the audacity that this this group of guys they're were trying like trying to play it off like it's something else yeah they're like we can do that yeah we can use that yeah and we'll just cool. make our own movie copyright infringement we'll, we'll back in the in 82 uh, it's on yeah, the it other side it's on the other side of the earth dude <laughs> 30 years ago it's on the other uh, side of the earth i wow i i love that um just it's kind of hard to They're literally brain, sitting in front of a screen. They're it's literally sitting obvious. in front of like a TV uh, because, screen. Because, I mean, it may not be obvious if you hadn't seen Star Wars before, <laughs> but it's the fucking Death Star in the background. It's, what do you think George Lucas thinks of this? Is he flattered? Um, I don't know if flattered is, is it the like right? fan fiction to him? Just like, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, well, it's probably a copyright infringement, it's probably oh, a severe sure. copyright infringement, and he probably sued these people. I mean, I hope he you're did. literally <laughs> using like footage from somebody else's movie, you're projecting the movie on a screen, and where our actors are sitting in front they, of it. They've got, they've got motorcycle like helmets, they got motorcycle helmets, and then like, you know, very impressive. 
Thank yeah. you very much, Rich. Yes. Good stuff. Uh, it's, so hopefully that was worth your $20. I hope uh, so. I'm, I'm I, now going to start chipping away at Cobra, which Cobra. is my next Yes, we'll uh, see that in about a month. Review. Yeah, yeah. Right, I like that.